I recently read the book Designing Your Life by authors Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. Burnett and Evans teach a class at Stanford to help people find their dream job. Most students attend their class because they feel utterly lost or miserable in their current career. One student named Janine was a successful lawyer in her mid-30s who had everything she had wanted. She got her college degree, her law degree, she had a good marriage, and a career at a top law firm doing important and influential work. But after driving home from the law firm, she would often sit out on her deck at night and cry. She had the life that she once wanted, so why wasn't she happy? Another student named Elise decided to quit her job several years ago and fulfill her dream of opening an Italian deli with a small cafe inside, just like the ones you see in Tuscany. She rented a building, renovated it, stocked it with the best Italian food, and then opened it to the public. It was a huge success. Her business was making money, and her dream had become a reality. But Elise was miserable. She hated the day-to-day -day experience of managing staff, tracking inventory, and doing all the little things that were needed to keep the business running. These two ladies aren't alone. In the United States, surveys show that two-thirds of workers are unhappy with their jobs, and 15% actually hate their work. How can so many people end up in a career they despise? And how can you and I avoid that same fate? The first way to avoid getting stuck in a career you hate is to challenge the dysfunctional belief that you and I have just one calling in life, one passion that if we don't follow, we'll end up miserable and full of regret. The truth is, there are several different paths that you could take from this point forward that all lead to a satisfying and fulfilling life. Once you start seeing and designing a few promising lives that you could live, you need to dip your toes into each of those lives to sample what it could be like before you dive in. The most important principle of designing your life is that you don't really know what you want until you experience it. So you and I need to find a way to simulate experiences before we make a commitment. To help you discover at least three possibilities of good lives that you could live over the next five years, Imagine walking into a movie theater and watching these three movies. The first movie is called Your Optimized Life. In this life, you redesign your current career so that you spend more time doing tasks that engage and energize you and less time doing tasks that make you feel disengaged and exhausted. In the book, there's a civil engineer named Michael. Michael hated his job and he wanted to change. His family recommended that he get an MBA and go into finance but authors Bill Burnett and Dave Evans recommend that Michael reflect on his day and find times when he was excited, focused, and having a good time at work, and write down exactly what he was doing during those times. In the book the authors write, Michael realized that he loved his job as a civil engineer when he was working on complex and difficult engineering problems. The times that drained him and made him miserable were those when he was dealing with difficult personalities and performing other administrative tasks that had nothing to do with the intricate task of engineering. By simply discovering when he was enjoying himself at work and what caused his energies to rise and fall, Michael discovered that he had actually enjoyed civil engineering. It was the people stuff, the proposal writing, and the fee negotiations that he hated. He just had to find a way to craft his job so that he was doing more of what he loved and less of what he hated. Instead of business school, which would probably have been a disaster, and an expensive one at that, Michael decided to double down on engineering. He ended up entering a PhD program and is now a high-level civil and structural engineer who spends his time, mostly alone, working on the kind of complex engineering problems that make him really happy. And he's become so technically valuable that no one asks him to do the administrative stuff anymore. On good days, he goes home with more energy than when he left for work in the morning. And that's a pretty good way to work. Like Michael, you need to realize that there are times during your day even days that you hate, when you're excited and focused and having a good time. To capture these moments, start what the authors call a good time journal. At the end of every day for the next three weeks, write down the times during the day you were completely immersed in what you were doing and felt energized afterwards. Try to get as specific as possible. Use the A-E-I-O-U technique. What activities were you doing? What environment were you in? Who were you or were you not interacting with? What objects were you using? And what users were you helping? As in, was there a specific person you were doing work for? If you complete your good time journal at the end of every day for the next three weeks, you'll start to see a consistent pattern of activities that engage you and energize you. Now imagine a life over the next five years where you find a way to do more of what engages you, like Michael did. 
Take out a piece of paper and draw out five boxes, representing the next five years. Do simple sketches with stickmen and basic objects and keywords to illustrate what those five years might look like. Now you walk into the second movie theater and watch your second life unfold. This is the alternate life. It's the life that you would have if your current career just vanished. Either AI took over and your work was being done by robots for much cheaper, or the market suddenly disappeared overnight. What industry would you try to transfer your skills to and do work that engages and energizes you? If you're an author and write novels for a living, imagine that suddenly everyone stopped reading novels and there was no way to make money writing novels anymore. What would you do? Again, use the items in your good time journal to create a five-year sketch of life number two. Now, walk into the third movie theater and see your third life unfold over the next five years. In this life, what I'll call your fascinated life, you see yourself doing the thing you'd want to do if money and image were no object. A few years ago, I suspended my fear of judgment and the fear of not making money right away and decided to sketch out what my life could look like if I did what fascinated me. That exercise led me into the life I'm in today, the life of an online teacher and content creator. If I hadn't looked beyond the fear of judgment and the fear of not making money, I would have missed out on a life that is deeply fulfilling. So what would you love to try if money and image were no object and you were guaranteed to succeed and make a good living doing what fascinates you? Again, take out a piece of paper, draw five boxes, and sketch out what this life might look like over the next five years. At this point, you might see a life that you really want to pursue. You may feel like committing to a life and going all in, but that would be a big mistake. Elise, the deli cafe store owner, dangerously assumed that she would enjoy the day-to-day -day experience of running her store. She wound up a miserable store owner because she committed before testing her assumption. Elise should have conducted what the authors call prototype conversations. Prototype conversations are conversations with people who are living the life that you want to live. During a prototype conversation, you ask the person across from you about their life story and get them to relive their experiences. As they are reliving their experiences, you get a sample of what their life is like. This sampling will help verify and validate your life designs. For Elise, she could have walked into a deli in another city and asked the deli manager if she could buy her a coffee and learn about her experiences running the deli. After talking to three satisfied and three dissatisfied deli cafe store owners, she would have had a clear idea of what was involved in running a store and realized that she wasn't really up for it. To start a prototype conversation, simply search your extended network on LinkedIn and look for people who are living lives that you want to live. Then reach out to them and ask them if they would be willing to share their story with you over a quick Skype call or a coffee nearby. The information you can learn in one prototype conversation can save you years of misery working in a career you shouldn't have pursued. So if you feel stuck in your career and you wanna make a career shift, start by sketching out three lives that you could live over the next five years. Build these lives around the critical few things that engage you and energize you at work. Then conduct prototype conversations to test questions and assumptions inherent in each of those lives. If you follow these steps, you have a much better chance of defining and pursuing a career that you'll actually love, rather than a career you'll think you'll love, but end up hating. That was the core message that I gathered from Designing Your Life by Dave Evans and Bill Burnett. This is a great guide for finding a career you love. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you've already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.